contribution. Um, last but not least, I will ask uh, Sally Painter, Chief Operating uh, Officer of Blue Star Strategies, private company, consultancy, consulting to uh, public authorities and also uh, uh, investment uh, decision-making bodies uh, and, and private companies. Uh, what is your take about what you've heard in terms of setting the scene and the ideas of how public authorities should react? And after you, we will turn to a couple of conclusions or uh, reactions by Susan Ness. And I would like to uh, warn already the technician that we then would like to have a second attempt to watch that uh, long-awaited video. Please, Mrs. Painter, you have the floor. Thank you very much for this opportunity. It's a pleasure to be here again at Baku for this annual and timely conference. And I also want to give a special thanks to Roshan and his team, who I think have done a wonderful job today. As we've just heard from this illustrious panel of leaders, the challenges protecting information integrity and the risks of disinformation in today's world are significant, and they are increasing. And I'd like to assert that I believe that the private sector has a unique role to play in working to protect information integrity and to provide a democratic defense against disinformation. Briefly, I would like to describe the forward-thinking strategic initiative that the private sector could develop by taking a leadership position on this vital topic. Such an initiative is critically important if we all want to have a true and lasting impact because at the end of the day, we can have the greatest ideas in the world and all the technical fixes at the ready, and we still may not have made a dent in the challenge. First, I'd like to talk a little bit about those of us who've been following this to see some of the lessons learned on the topic. First, this challenge is broader than any single actor. Second, a successful response must engage the whole society. And third, we must continue to work together to learn from each other's mistakes and successes and craft a government and a non-governmental solution. Our goal is to identify democratic solutions in the short term and bid, build societal resistance in the long term. We need concrete solutions that can be rapidly implemented, tested, and refined. And the plan needs to evolve as many of the people that cause the threat as they move forward. To make a dent, we have to move the debate among the right people, the right stakeholders. We have to unite these players, get them energized, and create a drumbeat, a drumbeat that reverberates in a way that makes the policy climate amenable to enacting our goals. We have to leverage the key voices that have the actual power and wherewithal to do something and to do it in a smart, strategic, and sustained way. Our strategy needs to look beyond policy and focus on our methods and our tools by governments, civil society, and private business. Having said that, sadly, it is clear that even some of our most important politicians those politicians that have the power to make changes are sometimes also the most ill-informed. Take, for example, the, US, the recent U.S. congressional hearing on data privacy featuring embattled Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg. Lawmakers from both parties asked Zuckerberg numerous questions that revealed their fundamental lack of understanding of how the Internet and e-commerce actually work. One senator even asked Zuckerberg how Facebook could sustain its business model in which users don't pay for the service. It was, incredible, it was an incredible admission of ignorance. And so this is our challenge, how to design and execute a strategic plan that fixes these misunderstandings and which moves the larger debate in a sustained way that supports and advances our goals. This process of how to move a policy is based on what I would suggest a couple of key elements. First, I'd like to su suggest the creation of something that a think tank in Washington, the Atlantic Council, has put forth. It's called the Counter Disinformation Coalition. It would be made up of like-minded government and non-governmental stakeholders to develop best practices, including standards for social media, such as a voluntary code of conduct. 
Coalition members could include international players from the UN, from the EU, including the European Center of Excellence for Countering Hybrid Threats in Finland, or at NATO, the NATO Strategic Center for uh, Communications and Excellence, and the EU Commission, the high-level group on fake news. We could also pick representatives from the OSCE, the OECD, business associations, tech-savvy civil society and academic watchdogs, and of course the private sector leaders such as Google, Facebook, and Twitter. Second, I think we need to agree on a strong and clear agenda with defined goals. We can't solve every issue at the same time, so we have to do something that's doable and grow it over time. And third, I think we need to designate a leader or a facilitator to drive the agenda and run the coalition. Someone who has an established track record for getting big things done and with both public and private sector experience. This person needs to have this as their only job, waking up every day focused on how to combat this process. It can't be an agenda that could be sidetracked by some crisis. And that person also needs to be an honest broker. And finally, the fourth issue I think we need to address on, on a coalition like this is to execute a robust outreach and communication strategy. It needs to be one that directly advocates to diverse stakeholders, to cultivate open lines of communication with regulators, and to leverage third-party validators. Holding dialogues such as this around the globe is going to be of the utmost importance. And we need to create a sophisticated media strategy to make sure that our messages are getting to the right players. I'd welcome your comments uh, and would love to work with you on such an agenda.